Vitamin K2 is definitely the most underrated nutrient. Of course, most people are unaware of the importance of nutrients in general, specifically fat-soluble vitamins, but even when people understand that getting vitamin A from liver, vitamin D3 from the sun, omega fatty acids from fish are all very important things, they still tend to miss and underestimate the importance of vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is not to be confused with vitamin K1, which is the form found in plant foods. This has limited bioavailability in humans and is used in small amounts to make proteins involved in blood clotting. There doesn't seem to be a need for it in the diet because there were indigenous groups, hunter-gatherers, that did not consume plant foods that contained vitamin K1. As we've covered in past videos, all vitamins are synergistic. They need to be contained in balanced amounts, otherwise we can create imbalances. These weren't really possible in nature because you would be hunting all day out in the sun and have a very specific food access. Hunter-gatherers weren't able to buy 10 pounds of beef liver from the farmer's market. They did, however, consume very high quality animal foods as well as fermented animal foods every single day, both of these being high in vitamin K2. The amount of vitamin K2 depends greatly on the pasture quality the grasses, the forage that the animal was eating. So in the spring, the summer, and the fall, the nutrient content of meat in general is much higher, especially vitamin K2. And if cows are being fed hay in winter, for instance, and you slaughtered a cow in winter and had that meat, maybe around January or February, there wouldn't be too many nutrients in the meat. But that same cow on summer or fall pasture is going to be fat, delicious and high in nutrients. In Weston Price's book, uh, who was a dentist who explored indigenous groups in the early 1900s, there was a group of Swiss settlers in the Lachental Valley. They literally worshipped the dairy products from the summer and fall cattle. They would light candles with the butter. This is also why humans are meant to get pregnant in the spring and summer and then give birth the next spring and summer. It goes with the natural food cycle of high nutrient animal food access. The most recognized function of vitamin K2 is calcium metabolism, as vitamin K2 works synergistically with vitamin D3 in this. Calcium is a very abundant mineral in the body. Vitamin K2 deficiency literally causes things like heart disease. Japan even prescribes vitamin K2 to people with osteoporosis. If you have calcification in soft tissue in your body, in your heart, you need vitamin K2 to remove it. There are many different forms of vitamin K2. We have MK4, MK5, MK7, MK8, 9, 10, 11, 12, each of these having their own individual function in the body. I'm not sure if there's complete numberings of vitamin K2 in this MK form from 1 to 12 or even higher than that, the information is not easily accessible. The most important thing to note is that the form of vitamin K2 as MK4 is what predominantly occurs in animal foods and is absorbed the fastest by our body. People say that MK7 is better because it stays in the bloodstream for longer, but that's because it's not being absorbed, it has a longer half-life, and it's not needed in nearly as many functions in the body. MK4 is the only form of vitamin K2 in the brain. It activates the proteins that maintain cell membranes and helps prevent inflammation as well as oxidative stress. 40% of the vitamin K in the body is in MK4 form. The rest is mainly MK9, MK8, and MK7. MK7 is, is really overstated, and yes, it does play a role in bone growth, but MK4 can cross into the placenta during pregnancy, and it is also contained in the breast milk, whereas MK7 is not. Certain cellular functions require MK4 specifically, but MK7 does have specific functions in bone. That being said, MK4 stops and reverses bone loss, 
grows stronger bones, and reduces fractures more than 80%, whereas MK7 has not been shown in studies to prove these benefits. So there is a lot of information out there on vitamin K2, and also a lack of information because it seems to play so many roles in human health. Going further into the science, genes, enzymes, metabolic mechanisms is far too time consuming and not really needed, although it is nice to understand. I tried to use ancestral knowledge, logic, and some science to perfect my health. Here it seems very clear that we need to consume the highest quality animal foods possible in both their normal and fermented form. If you are having a hard time accessing high vitamin K2 foods like really good quality cheese, uh, maybe some high quality egg yolks, or fermenting some type of product yourself, you can get a vitamin K2 supplement but you want it to be in the form of MK4. From what I've seen online, there is a decent supplement from Thorn Research. I think that's their name. Uh, it's a vitamin K2 in the form of MK4. It has like 1000 milligrams of vitamin K2 per drop. Uh, I'll throw that on my Amazon shop before I post this video. I usually recommend that people supplement initially regardless of their diet uh, to make up for past nutrient deficiencies and just to ensure that they're actually getting the nutrient. Then after a month or two, you know, ditch the supplements and just follow a nutrient dense diet once you're feeling better. So thank you guys for joining me. If you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, share the video if you can. If you guys would like to support me further, definitely check out frankiesfreerangemeat.com. We do sell some very high quality raw cheese, excellent source of vitamin K2. Also, frankiesnaturals.com has minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. What's funny is that we put emu oil in our moisturizing cream, so there is vitamin K2 in our moisturizing cream. So uh, you can check that out as well at frankiesnaturals.com. Thanks again for joining me guys and enjoy the rest of your day.